Okay, how many of you out there said, I want to be a civil servant when I grow up? Well, there's not many of you. Perhaps you don't know how exciting it can be. Well, Andrea Meyer decided to inform us all by creating a game about being a civil servant. Really? Don't, don't go away. It's okay. Come on back. That game is called Ad Acta, and I'll be talking about that with her this week on Board Games with Scott. Hi there, welcome to Board Games with Scott. This is a regular video where I take a game and explain it, and lightly review it. My goal is to help you decide if it's a game you'd like to purchase. This week I'm going to be talking about Ad Acta. So you can see here, if you look, it's Ad Acta. Isn't that clever? And this is a game about being civil servants, that you all work in a government agency, you're trying to get your work done on time. It's a game really of queue management and timing and, and trying to get your things done and trying to keep other people from getting their things done in order to be the most effective civil servant that you can. Before we go any further, I want to actually talk about the components of the game. Now it is a German game, so all the components are in German. Uh, there's some help for this. You can go online to BoardGameGeek and you can print out some English translations of the rules and the cards. But when you get it, everything is going to be in German. Now, the components are pretty funny. You've got this stamp top, which is, belongs to the start player, and you get this little package of uh, actual paper clips, authentic paper clips, which you can use to clip paper together or put the clips on cards. In the game, you get some wooden bits. These are going to represent uh, the player's score, going to represent dextrose as well, the candy. Uh, some, each player has a little desktop, and each, little, each one is different. It's kind of cute. Uh, the desktop has a place for your inbox and your outbox and a scoring table so you can see what points are worth and each one, each one looks a little different. You've got the main board here and the main board has got a scoring track as well as filing cabinets that will fill up with dossiers that are complete, a place for the mail cart, and a place to indicate how much time you spent sharpening pencils in the game. Now, these cards are the most important cards in the games, and these are the dossier cards. And one thing I did is I put them in some card sleeves to protect them, because one of the things you're going to do during the game is you're going to put paper clips on the cards to indicate that things have been done. Now, one other thing I did is I went out and upgraded and bought some big vinyl-covered paper clips instead of the little metal ones, again, to avoid damaging the cards too much. So you put the paper clips on the cards uh, in order to indicate that things have happened. So as the card goes from person to person, they're going to put paper clips on it to indicate they've, they have actually dealt with the card. When you start the game, you actually mix up these cards based upon their backs. And the backs will tell you which player is the first one that has to deal with the card. So each player gets a set of cards, they mix them up, put them in their inbox, and fan them so they can see them all. Now I should spend a minute to actually talk about these cards because these are at the heart of the game. The color of the card represents the office that will score points when this card is complete. The cards have a number of pieces of information. Here at the top is a letter. The closer to A that the letter is, the earlier in the game that you want to make that card completed to get points. If it's someone else's card and it's a low letter, then you want to stick that card in the bottom of your inbox if you can in order to keep that person from getting points. There are two or three entries on the card, and these are the departments that have to deal with the card. And so the first entry is going to be the first department that deals with it, and etc. So when you get your cards to start out the game, actually all the cards are going to have your desk's color as the first entry, because your desk's color corresponds to the symbol on the back of the card. Whenever you complete a card, whenever you're instructed to do that, you can either do that during your turn or someone else can make you do that to uh, execute a dossier, to work on the file. You then take a paper clip and put it on top of your symbol, and then move that card over to your outbox in the desk. And that will wait then until the end of the turn when everything in your outbox will get picked up and distributed to other players. You also get special action cards, and they are all in German. One thing that I did is I went to Board Game Geek where someone has actually made English version cards for all the special action cards. I printed those out, cut them out, and put them in card sleeves. And then I can just play with this. Instead of having to play with the original cards and a translation sheet, Everything else you can do with just matching colors and symbols on the board. You don't need to speak any additional German to be able to play this game. Now this is a German game, and Andrea Meyer has uh, her own company, uh, Bewitched Games, and uh, she's put out a number of games. I met with her and decided to talk with her about this game. So let's hear from her about the game. 
Welcome to Board Games with Scott, and this week we're going to talk about Ad Acto, which is a game developed by Andrea Meyer, and she's here with me, and is going to talk with us a little bit about the game. Um, it's you, it's basically about um, you being a clerk or the the boss of an office in a community, a mun municipality, mm -hmm. and what you want to do during the week, which is the length of the game, uh, you want to file all your stuff as best as possible, because if you don't, uh, you'll score minus when you go into the weekend. Okay. It has beautiful paper clips for those of you who <laughs> like paper clips. Um, and you need to think a little bit about timing. And you need to have others work for you, which sounds good to me. You know, as long as uh, <laughs> that is going on, I don't mind. Okay. Um, you have this um, office in front of you. For example, you are the mayor, so that would be the town hall right here. Okay. Or you have the uh, the job office, or the environmental office, um, and we have the tax office over there. Um, each of these has seven cards in front of them, which are files. And this file obviously has to be processed by three different offices. So this has to be processed in the town hall, which is yellow. Okay. Then it has to go to the tax office for um, check-in. And then it has to go to the environmental office. Okay. When all of this has been done, and we mark that by taking paper clips and pushing them onto the cards, okay. like this. So if that has one paper clip right here, it has been pro processed by the town hall. And when it has another one, it has already been processed by the, uh, uh, by the tax office. And the same will then be valid for the environmental office. And only if it has as many clips as there are numbers on it, mm -hmm. it can finally go, go into the uh, file cabinets. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, and as you can see, there are different cabinets. And on your desk, which you have in front of you, mm -hmm. you see a table of, um, of values that are assigned to different files. These files have na uh, names from A through G. Okay. So if e, e goes into the file cabinet number one, it's worth four points. It might have been better to wait until it goes into file cab cabinet number four, because then it w would have been worth seven points. Okay, so there's a scale yeah. that, based upon uh, the, the day that you're working, the file, you're going to get more or fewer points. Exactly. All right. And what happens in the end? Um, you, you score these points uh, on the track, on the scoring track. Mm -hmm. The game ends when either the file cabinets are full, or when somebody has exceeded 35 points, which is down here. So you have only three action points, okay. three actions in your on your turn, which means you can either process a file, which you do the way that you take it from your inbox, and you obviously will only take the top file because you never draw something out of why, a why, stack. Why work that hard? You yeah, know. there you go. <laughs> um, so you only take the top file, you process it by reading it thoroughly, and okay. then deciding to put a clip onto it, and then you put it in your outbox. All right. Now you will ask, how does it get from the outbox to somebody else? How does it get from the outbox to there somebody else? There you go. Else? Well, how does it get from the <laughs> outbox to somebody else? Um, there is um, the carrier boy mm -hmm. who comes around after we took one round and who collects everything. And I go, oh, there's something in the outbox here. That's interesting. I put that into my cart right here on the board. Okay. okay. Then he goes to my left neighbor, sees two files in the outbox, and of course he grabs the stack. Okay and puts them on top into his cart. He then goes to the environmental office and finds another file being processed, and he then goes to the tax office and sees there's another file that has been processed. Okay. Everything goes into the cart, so I take all of this out of the cart, mm -hmm. and I take the top one, which has been processed in a way last, okay. put into last, and I give it to the next office on the list. Since the tax office has processed this one, it goes back to the environmental office. All right. And of course, it goes on top of the top inbox. Of their inbox. All right. Where else should it go, right? This one goes to the town hall on top of the unprocessed files. Mm -hmm. This one goes to the tax office. Put it on top of your files. All right. Another one for the tax office. Oh, I'm getting more work. And another one for the job office right here. So what we have now in the offices are inboxes in which the newest stuff is on top and the oldest stuff sort of gets rotten during the day okay. because you just can't work that hard, as you know. Um, if you want to work harder than you are supposed to, <laughs> you can use Dextrose okay, for have that. Have some candy. Have some candy, put it away right here, 
and then get one more action. All okay. Right. Actions are not only processing your own files, but I can just as well say I'm the town hall and I see that there's a lot of files rotting in your inbox. Okay. <laughs> so I might just want to ask you to please process my file. All right, and that's okay. the same a same type of action. That's the same type of you action. It's my yours, action point, but you have to work. And I can't say no. I must. No, do you it. can't because obviously offices will work together. Obviously, you know? right? So. So you just put that into your outbox. That was my my first action. I process this myself. Mm -hmm. It's my second action. And then I might ask the guy in the environmental office mm -hmm. to process that, that file too. Which I will do because A and B score high in the beginning. Okay. And I try to get my A and B into file cabinet one. Okay. Now it's say it's the turn of the the guy in the uh, in the job office. Mm -hmm. He's got a problem because all of his files are sort of buried. Okay. Yeah. I in some places. Right. Okay. So right now he doesn't. Uh, well, he does not want to process the tax office's file. Why would he? Okay. And he has nobody to ask. Uh, to process a file because all of the bottom the, the yeah. files on the top of the boxes are not, go not going his. to help him okay, okay. Um, what he could do is he could use two action points mm -hmm. to play one of his action cards okay okay and he will then use his action card telephone okay so there's a telephone call to the environmental office saying, I know that I sent you that file weeks ago, <laughs> you know, and you have to process it now. All right. This is the only case in which somebody draws a file from inside the stack and processes it at once. And that costs you two action points. Right, to do there this. you go. So that's two, and there's other action cards which is draft, which means um, if I help you. Uh, freshen the air up in your office, mm -hmm. which means I open, open your window. window. Unfortunately, all of your files fall on the floor. Okay, and I get to help you. <laughs> That's and so kind them. of you. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I mean, I am kind, you know. So uh, I get to help you. I get all the files in your inbox and sort them anew. All right. Okay. There's another action card, which is consultation, which means that something that is already in the outbox, usually with another player, but also with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, goes back into the inbox oh. because your boss has one more question. <laughs> okay, which means if I play this on the yellow A, I can play that for two action points, and the yellow A, um, the the clip that uh, that shows that the, the town hall has already processed it goes mm -hmm. away, and as the boss never has time, it, it goes, goes underneath the, <laughs> the stack. Okay. Last action card, and everyone has one set of these action cards, and each of them, them you can only use them once. Um, the last action card is special delivery, which allows me not to wait for the um, for the messenger boy, but just to get that to the next office directly. Okay, it costs me two action points. Now the problem obviously is that you never have enough actions. So what you might want to do on a turn like this, where your files are not on top of any stack, mm -hmm. you might just want to spend your time preparing your instruments, which is sharpening your pencil, <laughs> okay? Which you do by taking uh, the piece in your color and use this pencil sharpening scale. All right. You just say, I saved one, I saved two, I saved whatever, okay? Whenever I want to, I can, in my turn, at the beginning or at the end of my turn, I can exchange those points for dextrose if there is dextrose. Oh, so someone has to okay. use their dextrose yeah. for you to be able exactly. to do that. All right. Exactly. So if I want to do that, I just put then that down too and take one dextrose per two pencil sharpening points. Hi there. I just wanted to jump in here and remind you of what's going on. Now on your turn, you're going to get three actions. Those actions can be to process the top file in your box, to make someone else process the top file in their inbox, or to go and sharpen pencils. You can also spend two actions to play one of your special cards. That's another option you have. You can also spend dextrose you've gotten, remember two sharpened pencils equals one dextrose, to get an additional action during your turn. In a turn, all the players get three actions except for the last player to go in each turn. That player only gets two actions. That's how a turn works. After everyone's taken a turn, then you pile all of the things that are in the inbox into the mail cart. Then you take the mail cart and you deliver everything out. If a file cabinet has filled, then you score it using the table on the sheets. Back to the interview. 
there you go. This is basically it. We take turns. Um, the first player changes, and we have a first player marker that indicates very well, I suppose, who is first player right now. All right. Okay. And that's basically it. Once a file cabinet is finished, at the end of the round, we check C in cabinet A is five points for yellow. All right. So we put yellow to five, and we got an E in cabinet one uh, for, for, for red, which is four points. We leave it like that, and we put a done card onto okay. that. So we see this is finished. Okay. That's basically the game. It takes like 45 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fun, even though it's about filing. Okay. There you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that wraps up our review of Ad Acta. What do I think about this game? Well, I have to say, it's a tough one to review. If it sounds appealing to you already, then I think it will be something you like. If it sounds horrible to you already, then it will probably be something you don't like. I think your mind's probably not going to be changed playing the game. So if you like the idea of managing a queue, of getting into character, of being kind of silly, of taking on this role of civil servants, passing jobs and passing the buck, then the game might appeal to you. If you say that sounds horrific, I'd rather be, oh, colonizing some other country or something like that, then go play some other game. This is not the game for you. Because of that, I don't really feel good at giving this game a letter grade. If it sounds appealing, you're going to like it. If it doesn't sound appealing, you're not. Pretty simple. After Andrea and I talked about Ad Acta, we talked about some of the other games that she's produced, uh, Hasa and uh, Wordwise. And so I want to actually show you those pieces now. They're little short reviews. So again, they'll give you an idea if you might want to buy these games. And then it'll end up with uh, Andrea talking a bit about what it's like to go into the publishing business, publishing your own games. So, with that, I'll turn you back over to Andrea. I won't see you again. Thanks a lot for coming and to see more videos like this. Head over to BoardGamesWithScott.com. Thanks a lot, and enjoy the rest of the show. Have you done other games? Is, 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 does your company have other games you'd like to talk about? My most recent game is WordWild, which is a um, word skill reaction game, if you will. Um, it is all about finding words. What you do is you have cards that have word beginnings and endings. You have six of them in front of you, and one is each player has six of them. Um, players play simultaneously, um, and one card is flipped in the middle, and you try to find a word that goes from one of your beginnings okay. to the end in the middle, or from the beginning in the middle to one of your endings. All right, so two cards will make up a word? Absolutely. All right. And you can put any le number of letters in between. Oh, so you can find right. three uh, uh, letters, uh, you, can, you can find words with three letters or with 15, I don't mind. And I even don't mind if you spell them correctly in the middle as long as the beginning <laughs> and the end are spelled correctly, mm -hmm. okay? Um, this is done simultaneously, so the fastest wins, it's fun. That sounds great. Um, it is, <laughs> and it comes in English language, so there you go. Where buy, would, buy where, more. Where would people be able <laughs> to buy these games? Um, uh, some of them are carried by Adam Spielt, okay. um, which is a, a good source. So basically Adam Spielt would be the source. Right. Uh, you can order directly from me, but usually that's too expensive postage-wise. Okay. Because I, uh, I charge you the postage. I don't charge you much, much above that, mm -hmm. but I charge you the postage. There's another game which I'd like to talk briefly about okay. because it's um, been received very well here at the gathering. That's called Hossa. That's H-O-S-S-A. I spell that because people keep mixing it with Hansa, which is totally oh, different. Yes, yes. Um, and there's a singing game. You draw two cards. The cards have English and German words. You pass one card to your left neighbor, and your left neighbor names a game. Uh, game, yeah, there you go. Names a song, the title of which contains um, the word. I had given you love. You might want to say something like, um, I want to know what love is, okay? okay? You say that, you name it, you get one point. You sing it, like, I want to know what love is, <laughs> okay? That'll be two, okay? okay? If you continue, I want you to show me, uh, that'll be four. Oh. Plus, if you continue, I can sing along and get a, get a point myself. Okay. Okay? You don't have to sing nicely. You just have to <laughs> sing in a way that somebody recognizes what you mean. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's even more fun if people can't sing. <laughs> but you, So you need to end up knowing at least the words to be able to join in? Yeah. 
it's basically based on self-estimation that you say, okay, I sang along or I didn't. Mm -hmm. Usually in rounds that are uh, rounds usually take place late at late night. Okay. And you don't care about the scores. Right, right. The scores actually is just a help to get people singing who usually won't sing. So. Well, that's interesting. So I, the strategy in that game is you want to pick songs that you think that you think everyone will know. Is that? This is how I play it. Yeah. You can play it strategically, which means um, you can you pick, pick songs, songs that no nobody knows. knows. Right. But isn't that much? Yeah, there's I no mean, fun in that. It's not you fun. Know, you might as well right? go do karaoke if you're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is there a website with There this is game? a website. Website that's uh, in English and German. It's dub uh, dub dub bewitched um, dash spiele mm -hmm. s p i a i e l e dot d e. Okay. Any advice to people wanting to start their own game company? Don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> which is not true. No, that's basically a, a an Alan Armoon uh, advice, which mm -hmm. I don't think is true. All right. Um, there are different motivations for starting an, your own game company. If your motivation is that you have the one best game of the world, uh, which has has been rejected by about every game <laughs> company you know, don't do it. You know, if you have innovative ideas that people won't publish because they are afraid of not hitting the target group or because they are afraid that this is not good for the uh, like like the gamers we all know that play everything from Egypt to Middle Ages and back, mm -hmm. um, you might want to try, but what you want to think about um, is that it's not only designing and testing the game, but you have to take a step to the left or to the right and be your own editor. Hmm. And that's basically um, work that you do at a desk. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> this is not creative time. Yeah. You learn a lot, which I like about that, but you spend a lot of time um, asking people for prices, comparing prices. Um, trying to think of how you can make your bits cheaper, hmm. trying to think of where to store the whole thing, you know, because as soon as you start printing a thousand copies, you will have to consider how long it will take you to sell those. And this is capital that you don't have That's when you true. want to go yeah. on a trip or something. So what you want to think about are a lot of questions. I put something about that on my website. Oh, all right. I described uh, the process of creating Hossa and then printing Hossa. Mm -hmm. Um, a large part of this I already translated, which I usually do when I just have spare time, which I don't have much of, actually. Um, so maybe you want to check that out. Um, not everything has been translated yet, but I think it should be a great help. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to start your own company, but you'd rather um, go for other companies to publish your stuff, there's also some rules which might help. Um, for example, um, imagine me, you know, there's like, I don't know, maybe a thousand or two thousand wannabe game designers out there. Mm -hmm. um, if everybody of them sent me a box with his game, and not only me, but like everybody, you know, what would I do? I mean, how should I possibly evaluate mm -hmm. that stuff? So what I need and what, uh, what others need, especially others because I usually don't take um, I don't usually t don't take proposals because I contact people if I want want something from okay. them because I'm too small to actually evaluate stuff. Um, what they want is a three-line email describing this is my game. It is about this topic. It has this what is new to it, and I think you could be interested because. Hmm. All right. Do you want it? Do you want the rules? That is. Mm -hmm. And then you wait for two weeks. And if after two weeks you didn't get a reaction, you ask, send another email, a very friendly email asking <laughs> if uh, they have read your proposal and if they are interested. If they, are, if they don't answer, they are not. So st stop bugging them, okay. you know? Um, if they answer, however, you should have your rules prepared, um, at least in English, if possible in German, mm -hmm. but English is fine with German companies. So. You want to be professional in a way that you have good self-esteem of what you're doing, where you're at, at what point in your game designer career you are, mm -hmm. and where, what you're heading for. And what is most important, if you are thinking of getting published, you usually do that either for the fame or the money. So don't lie to yourself.
this is not a hobby. Okay. This is a job. <laughs> okay. That's basically it. Great. Well, thank you very much. In case it's something you had some interest in, now you've, you've heard some advice that someone's in the trenches fighting away and doing a good job of it. Thank you. Thank you.